Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director for the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Joining me is Hawaii Restaurant Association's Executive Director, Siobhan Garcia. Hi, Siobhan. Hey, Cheryl. Thank you. Could I you wanted to yeah, I wanted to introduce um, Ryan Kakuda. He is the Assistant Controller for Ultras and Simplicity HR. Welcome, Ryan. Uh, hi there, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us, Ryan. Today we're answering questions regarding the Employee Retention Credit, also known as ERC. Now, to clarify, I just wanna state, you know, Ryan and I, we're just having a conversation HRA is not a tax consultant or a tax professional. Today's discussion is a general discussion and business owners, you need to consult with your own tax professional on your specific situation. So the ERC, basically, I wanna frame it. What is the employee retention credit? The ERC will not run out of funds, nor does it need to be paid back. It is a tax credit. The Hawaii Restaurant Association has been looking for more ways to assist our restaurants and businesses keep their doors open. So today we're having this very timely discussion. The ERC was authorized under the CARES Act and encourages businesses to keep employees on payroll. So to claim your tax credit before it expires on December 31st, 2021, Today we'll be discussing who qualifies, the difference between 2020 and 2021 rules, the overlap of other grants such as the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, the PPP loan, and the IDLE. So these are all things to keep in mind while you're fighting for this employee retention credit. So Ryan, why don't you go ahead and discuss it a little bit, share with our listeners, and then we can go through some of the questions that our listeners have submitted. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I think the best way to go about this today is um, I'm going to talk about, you know, well, there's, there's maybe like uh, three phases of the retention credit. You know, it started in 2020 with the CARES Act. And the rules were amended twice uh, via the Consolidated Appro Appropriations Act, the CAA, and uh, uh, most lately through the uh, American Rescue Plan, uh, ARPA. Um, so the rules uh, for the CAA and ARPA are very similar. So for purposes of this webinar, I'm going to refer to the retention credit rules as the 2020 rules and the 2021 rules. Um, and I, I think it would be best to start off with, with 2020 and then, you know, I'll go into 2021, discuss the differences and, um, you know, some of the, the, the changes that, that happened. So starting off with 2020, uh, you know, the employee retention credit was uh, uh, I'm sorry, businesses were able to take the credit on eligible wages and employer uh, covered health care from March 12th, 2020 through December 31st, 2020. Um, businesses qualified if either they had a, a full or potential government mandated shutdown or if their gross receipts declined by 50% or greater. Um, and businesses uh, continued to qualify until the quarter after their grocery receipts got, receipts got up to 80%. So, you know, for example, for quarter three, if your grocery receipts went above 80% in July, you could still uh, take the credit for August and September and you, you would not be eligible starting in quarter four. Um, originally, um, businesses that took a PPP loan were not eligible to take the credit. Um, and I'll discuss this a, a little bit later, but that's, uh, there was a big change uh, as far as that goes for, you know, the 2021 rules. Um, the credit uh, for 2020 was capped at $5,000 per employee per year. So basically from March through December, capped at $5,000 per employee. Um, and uh, the other big rule was that employers with less than 100 employees were, were able to take credit on, you know, the full wages and healthcare pay. If the employer had more than 100 employees, the employer could only take credit on wages and healthcare paid for the employees not doing service for you know uh, for those wages and healthcare. So, for example, if um, an employee was furloughed and you continued to to pay them, uh, you know, just for the sake of it, then you know those wages would be counted if you're greater than 100 uh, employee uh, employee employer. Um, 
Um, and uh, one thing to note too is the uh, the employee count. You know, whether you're less than or greater than 100, take into account uh, aggregation rules. Uh, it's very similar to the you know, to the ACA aggregation rules. So something to keep in mind there. Okay, so that's kind of a high level uh, summary of 2020. Now going into 2021. So the CAA originally extended the employee retention credit to June 30th, 2021, and then ARPA subsequently extended it again to December 31st, 2021 of this year. Uh, some of the big changes were that uh, the the credit is now you know 70% of qualified wages in healthcare per employee per quarter. So basically, what that's saying is. So per employee, uh, you can potentially take up to twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars for the for 2021, as opposed to five thousand dollars for 2020. So a big change there. Now, and going going back to the uh, the rule about the PPP, so the the CAA amended the rule to, to state that if you took even if you took a PPP loan, you can now retroactively qualify to take the employee retention credit. So so and and this came you know after 2020. So you know if if you took a PPP loan in 2020, um, you you did not take employee retention credit because of that. You could go back and amend your 2020 tax returns, take the employee retention credit on wages that were not covered by PPP forgiveness or uh, or otherwise covered by uh, you know any any other grant. Uh, you know in in our case, I think it would be primarily the restaurant re revitalization. A program, um, you know, possibly the, you know, for Hawaii, there's the, um, I think it was a bunch of venue uh, grant as well. I, I'm not sure, you know, how many restaurants would qualify for that. But in, in a nutshell, you just, they, they still weren't allowing you to double dip on on the credit. Um, another big change was for 2021, if uh, you, you would qualify if your gross receipts fell by 20%. Uh, compared to the same quarter in 2019, and so it was 50, now it's 20, so it's, it's much more generous in that sense. Um, and, it, it, uh, and the final big change that would, would potentially apply to most uh, employers is that they changed the definition of a large employer from greater than 100 employees to greater than 500 employees. So, so now, you know, if, if you have 500 employees or less, you could, uh, you know, take credit on all uh, wages paid and healthcare covered. Um, as, as opposed to only getting credit for uh, wages paid for employees not doing service. And that is kind of a high level summary of the, you know, the, the, the differences in the 2020, 2021 rule, and, you know, who, who qualifies. May I, may I just verify, Ryan? So yeah. just to verify, if a client is with um, Ultras Simplicity HR. This is something that Ultras Simplicity HR is automatically doing for all of their clients. Um, I, I, I don't think automatically is the right uh, word. So he, here's the thing. So Ultras as, as a PEO or, or ASO for that matter, um, we, we don't uh, ha handle the, the income tax side of the business. So, you know, Altus doesn't have records of, you know, gross receipts, gross revenue. So it, it's up to our clients to let the, uh, the PEO know that they, they qualify. Once they, they confirm that they qualify, then from there, uh, you know, Altus does the, does the rest. You know, we do the calculation, uh, you know, submit it to the client for approval, and ultimately, you know, file the tax return and get the credit back to our clients. Perfect. Thank you, Ryan, for clarifying that. Um, HRA also has members that do specialize in the employee retention credit. And so we'll be having a webinar next week. And thank you again, Ryan. Ryan will be on the webinar the 14th. So it'll be October 14th at 1.30 p.m. If any of our listeners and viewers are not subscribed for Hawaii Restaurant Association's industry updates, they come directly to your inbox please subscribe at hawaiirestaurant.org and you'll get valuable information about things like the employee retention credit. So next week, Thursday, 14th, 1.30 in the afternoon, 
Ryan, and we'll have a panel discussion all around the employee retention credit and answer more questions that these restaurant tours have. So Ryan, I understand the deadline to apply for this is December 31st, 2021. Okay, so a few things to say about that, for sure. Um, so as of now, uh, the American Rescue Plan, you know, like I mentioned, extends the employee retention credit to December 31st of this year. Um, now, with that said, that doesn't necessarily mean the business has to, uh, has to apply or, you know, file the tax return by then. At, at this point, uh, um, you know, the IRS statute states that businesses have up to three years to amend their tax returns. So, what that means hypothetically at this point, you know, you know, three years from, you know, from December 2021, you know, if, if whatever reason a business, you know, discovers that they qualify, you know, they can go back and, you know, amend their 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 uh, 941 tax return uh, and, and claim the credit. With that said, I wouldn't suggest doing that. Uh, you know, I, I would suggest that, you know, if, if possible, if you, you, you know you qualify, get on this, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, for two reasons, mainly. So, one, at this point, the IRS is already, and, and this is a fact, we, we know this for sure, the IRS is backlogged with, you know, 941X or uh, amended tax returns. You know, normally we've seen the IRS response time for those, you know, about, uh, you know, 30 to 60 days, maybe. At this point, we know that they're taking at, at minimum about five to six months to to, to recognize those returns and, and, and process them. All that means is, you know, that, that's an additional delay in you know get, uh, obtaining the credit, the money, you know, for that. Uh, and the second reason I, I I wouldn't suggest waiting on this is you never know what new rules will will come out. You know, there there could be uh, a, a new rule that comes out, you know, next year saying. Uh, you know, you don't have the three years specifically for the retention credit, you know, who knows? Um, and along those lines, just about a month ago or so, um, it, it came out that Congress is actually talking about sunsetting the employee retention credit as of September of this year. Uh, you know, what that means is if that, um, that, that law goes into effect, the retention credit is effectively over as of you know, as of today, as of, you know, we're in quarter four now. Uh, you know, with that said, I haven't heard anything final, although it is on the table. So we'll kind of have to take a wait and see approach on that. Thank you so much. Um, so, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no. So I, I was going to say, you know, one thing to uh, another thing to kind of note with the IRS um, and, and just about, uh, you know, the calculation of the credit itself is it's. I think it's going to be really important to make sure, you know, especially if you're with a PEO or, or if you have a, a tax preparer or an accountant or whoever it may be, is to really work with them to, to make sure that, you know, you, you, you understand what you're, you're, uh, you're filing for and making sure it's accurate. Reason being, so specifically for, you know, uh, uh, you know COVID-related uh, tax credits and the employee retention credit is not the only one, of course, you know, we have the, the FSCRA 6A and whatnot, but the IRS has implemented a special five-year statute of limitations to audit, which is, you know, it's longer than normal. So what that kind of implies is that, you know, they, 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 they may, you know, when, when, when the resources become available, they may take, you know, pretty hard look at some of this stuff, you know, to make sure the, the, the tax credits that were claimed were, were legit. Very interesting. Thank you for giving that valuable tip. So, Siobhan, do you have any questions for Ryan? Uh, yeah. So, you know, when you're um, when you're talking with your clients and they're saying that they qualify, what are the types of documents that they will need to provide to show that they do qualify? So, from from and. For, for Altruist, and this is for, for my company, you know, I, I can't speak for, you know, all the companies out, out there and whatnot. You know, we just, we have an attestation uh, form that our clients sign that basically just certifies that they qualify, you know, based on, you know, one of the, the, the conditions. Um, you know, once they sign and, you know, basically take, take the liability for that, we, we're, we're okay with that and, you know, we, we, we handle the rest. And, and is there, um... 
are there other reasons that they may not qualify and do you tell them to apply anyway? Uh, if, if, if we know that a, a client doesn't qualify or if a, you know, a client says we don't, yeah, no, we, we would definitely would not you know, recommend to, to apply for this anyway. Um, you know, I think one, you know, I, and as far as I know, I, I think most businesses are eligible with the exception of, uh, and I, I don't know how much this would apply to Hawaii restaurants, but government, government or state uh, entities would not qualify. Okay. And, um, you know, so once they receive their money and everything, um, and I know it sounds like you're saying it's going to take quite a bit of time, you know, in between when they file it and when um, they will actually receive the money. When they do that, will this need to be claimed on next year's tax return? Not next year. It's actually, um, we, like, so for example, if, uh, if, if uh, a business qualifies, let's say for quarter one of 2021, mm -hmm. we actually, we go back and amend the tax return for quarter one. So it, it'll, it'll be quarter one, uh, 2021 tax return uh, amended via 941, form 941F. Okay. And, and um, one, uh, one thing to note there, just about the timing of the, of the money, um, it, it, it's correct that yes, the, the IRS, um, is taking a little bit longer to recognize these 941X returns. Now, depending on the, the, the situation, depending on what kind of, um, you know, agreement you have with your PEO, uh, you know, there's, there's a PEO and, and ASO programs that are, that are slightly different. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll take the full five to six months for the client to uh, obtain the, the money back. It, it, uh, reason being, the IRS, uh, you know, ha has a implement a, implemented a rule kind of specifically for this, saying employers are able to same, basically short their tax deposits in anticipation of taking the credit. So, you know, with that said, you know, uh, from a from a PEL standpoint, yes, we need to make sure that you know the, the tax return is the numbers are final, the, the numbers are correct. The, uh, from that point, the, the next tax deposit can be shorted, and at that point, we can, you know, credit credit our clients, um, and and that would be probably long before the IRS, you know, recognizes recognizes the return. But like I said, you know, that, that's specifically for a PEO relationship. Like, you know, there there could be, you know, other like ASO relationships or or whatnot that you know, things would be treated a little bit different. Okay. And so, you know, obviously we're not out of the woods. We've seen all these other variants, um, especially this one that we've been hit with was the Delta. Um, is there a possibility that this program could be extended and taken for next year as well? There's always that possibility. Um, you know, with, with that said, it, I would say at this point in the year, it, it doesn't seem like it. I, I, I would, I would have thought that if this program were going to be extended, you know, so, something would have, you know, uh, come out by, by now as, as far as, uh, you know, like a, a, another congressional act. You know, what that said is not out of the question, but I, I, it, I would, my, my opinion would be, you know, it's not looking like it. Well, thank you. That was very helpful. Um, back to you, Cheryl. Thank you. So Ryan, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we are all not their tax consultants. So I'm asking all of our viewers, to please consult your own tax consultant. And if you go to the irs.gov website, there is a lot of information on there. And as Ryan mentioned and pointed out so clearly that it's changing. And that's part of why the urgency for the, this, this YouTube um, recording that we are now going to be sending out to our restaurant tours and our webinar next week. Ryan, thank you for participating with that. The other um, comment that I wanted to make was all about, you know, if a person has, how can I say that? If a person has been said, oh, because you've received, you know, RRF, Restaurant Revitalization Fund, PPP, um, Payroll Protection, or IDLE, you don't qualify. And I feel that people need to go to the 
irs.gov and research the employee retention credit so that they can see whether or not and just do a quick calculation if they could qualify. Is there anywhere else, Brian, that you would recommend them going to? You know, I, I think uh, I think you're right that the, the IRS website is the best place. Now, uh, you know, keep in mind, you know, the IR, if you want, which I, I wouldn't recommend, but you can read the full act, the full guidance, you know, verbatim, uh, you know, thousands of pages, don't recommend it. Um, you know, the, the IRS does have an FAQ page that has been, that, that has been updated for each of these three acts. I, I think those pages, uh, you know, have, have a good amount of information and, and should be enough to, to let you determine whether you qualify or not. Um, you know, one, one other thing I kind of like to point out along the lines of what you said, um, re re regardless of, uh, you know, whether you qualify or not, whether you, you, you take the employee retention credit or not, it's going to be very important to to maintain accurate records, especially when you have uh, you know the PPP restaurant revitalization and uh, you know potential employee retention tax credit. Um, you know you got to be you know very very clear on you know what what wages and you know healthcare and then you know overhead, for example, uh, you know were included in your PPP forgiveness. If you got the restaurant revitalization fund, you you got to be very clear on on what wages. That those funds were, were used to pay, and in a, you know, in that case, if you wanted to also take the employee retention credit, you just have to make sure that anything left over or not covered by those two other programs are, are submitted to the employee retention credit, uh, you know, program. So, um, yeah, and you know, and to, to my point about you know the five year, you know, that those are the kinds of things that I think will be will, will be looked at. Um, you, you know, I, I think. You know, double dipping on a lot of these credits is is, is something that uh, you know the IRS has you know tried to make it a point to, to prohibit. And and another um, that I've been researching as a restaurant um, owner myself is if your income went up at all, you're not qualified, which is not true because when you look at the revenue streams, you have let's say you have dining rooms that were shut down twice in 2020 and right now we're still at limited capacity six foot distancing 50 percent capacity so when you look at the income for the dining in versus you're taking out those things also can be taken into consideration ryan as i'm researching more about this very important topic because like all of us we don't want to leave money on the table yeah absolutely not yeah. yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of an income uh, limitation on this. But yeah, so I, I, I think, uh, yeah, you'll be okay, you know, regardless of that. Yes, yes, and many of the restaurateurs had said, you know, if I made money on my takeout, but I didn't make money in my dining room, and so they're looking at the different um, revenue that came into their business. So they're all looking at different ways of, you know, have they looked under every stone? Have they looked you know, under every rock, just to be sure that they can apply for this employee retention credit. So it's based on revenue. Yeah, right? I, I think. I, yeah, I think in that case, you, you know, you would you look at just your total revenue compared to the, you know, 2019. Yes, yes. And as I mentioned, you know, we're not giving anyone advice. We're just saying please look into it because all of the things that I'm hearing, Ryan, is there's a lot of misconceptions out there, and people, you know saying, oh, no, you wouldn't qualify for this reason or, or that reason. And when you actually dig deeper, you could qualify. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I know, uh, you know, personally of, uh, you know, some other businesses that who, who, whose own accountant, uh, you know, mentioned to them that, that, that they didn't qualify. And then, you know, when I kind of ask them questions that, you know, I, I don't agree with them. <laughs> which is, which is why yeah, I'm it, it's a Yes, exactly, which is why I'm asking everyone to go to the irs.gov website to keep digging, to attend webinars, to do your research, because every business has a different model, right? And, and maybe there's something that you'll discover that your, person, your advisor wasn't aware of. So as you said, just keep digging because you never know, right? Like Restaurant Revitalization Fund, it was a pure grant, right? So Yeah, so uh, yeah, so 
yeah, to, to your point, I think, uh, yeah, so the more you can kind of educate yourself about, uh, you know, the program itself, the rules, and yeah, you can, yeah, then, you know, the, a, a more uh, informed decision you can make about, you know, qualification or not. So Ryan, I just got the message um, that we have two more minutes. Do you have anything you want to say okay. in closing? Um, you know, I, I, I don't have anything to, to uh, additional to say on top, on top of what you already kind of said, which is, yeah, I, I you know, it's a, it's a good idea to, you know, check out the IRS website, um, you know, educate yourself, you know, as much as possible about the, about the rules and, you know, who knows, you know, maybe you, you will qualify, you know, despite, uh, you know, believing you didn't in the past. So, and uh, yeah, I definitely don't want to leave money on the table if possible. Excellent. Thank you again so much for spending the day with us. And in closing, if your business qualifies for the employee retention credit, it is a stimulus for your business designed to support those impacted by this pandemic. Time is running out as this credit does expire as of today and December 31st, 2021. And Hawaii Restaurant Association's employee retention credits webinar will be held on Thursday, October 14th at 1.30 p.m. It is free, no charge, because we're, we're all about educating and supporting our whole restaurant and food service industry. Again, Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurant and food service industry. And we'll see you all again in two weeks at Restaurants Hawaii. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.